Hi, this is Bat Nuclear again with a uh, another teaching preaching video. This one is called Are You Going to Heaven? Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and that there's no other way in this world to get to heaven. Which I can prove that to you in this video. Are you going to heaven? Is there anyone out there watching this video who's not sure if you're going to heaven or you're wondering are you going to heaven if you wonder if there's other ways uh, besides Jesus to get to heaven I'll start off by saying this the Bible says that that Jesus is the way the truth and the life and that no one gets to the Father no one gets to heaven except through him because if you can be a good person do good deeds live by the golden rule just going to church baptism doing all other kinds of good stuff you know living the good life um, if you can do that without accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior then God would have never sent Jesus to die for us in the first place that's something that most people don't seem to think about yeah just like uh, a good friend of my parents and this one lady that um my parents knew and my mom was always saying stuff like well I'm sure she's heaven she's in heaven now after she passed away because she was a really good person it don't matter I don't care if anyone out there claims to be a really good person or if or if anyone knows anyone who happens to be really good people I don't care you know some people in this world can can be uh, be the world's greatest good people sweetest nicest people in the world but if they don't have Jesus into their life they're not going to heaven the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the only way and there is no other way because if you can be such a good person a really good great person the world's greatest good person then God would have never sent Jesus to die for us to die for our sins in the first place so uh, here's some question here's a I'm um, like um, 17 questions I have to ask you from uh, this uh, this tract right here. I didn't write this tract, but I'm just reading from it. So, are you going to heaven? Check below what do you feel is be the best basis for getting into heaven. Do you believe that keeping the Ten Commandments, gifts to charity, doing one's best, leading a good life, good works, trying to obey the golden rule, tithing or giving offering to the church, church membership, regular church attendance, prayers, fasting, baptism, holy communion, born of Christian parents, confirmation, penances, or extreme unction. Which one of those you believe will get you into heaven? Or do you believe that all of them will get you into heaven? Well, let's see. Let's see to find out. According to God's word, you're on the way to heaven. But uh, the answer to question number one. The Ten Commandments are God's absolute rules for living. No man has ever perfectly kept all of God's laws except for God's only son, Jesus. A person will never reach heaven through his or her own efforts. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. The answer to questions 2, 3, and 4 are you know, gifts to charity, doing one's best, and leading a good life, a good life, are commendable acts, but according to the Bible, they will not save anyone. Here it says in Titus chapter 3 verse 5, or not by good, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. And you're not automatically saved by by doing all those things. That don't make you a Christian. You gotta you gotta personally uh, pray to God. You know, accept accepting uh, salvation through Jesus Christ. You gotta you gotta accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The answer is to uh, the questions number five, six, and seven: Neither good works, trying to obey the golden rule, or going to church will get you into heaven. 
For God's word says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, that is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The questions, the answers to questions 8, 9, 10, and 11, church membership, regular church attendance, prayers, and fasting are good in themselves, but they, cannot, they can never justify sinners before a holy God. For it says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, we are all as an unclean thing, and all, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. The answers to question 12 and 13 are, without trusting in Jesus Christ, baptism and communion cannot help and will not help. The Bible shows clearly that these are of spiritual value only when one believes in Jesus Christ. See Acts chapter 8, verse 12, and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, and 23 through 32 on those. The answer to question 14, children born into Christian homes need to be saved just like anyone else. For it says in John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, as many as received Christ, to them he gave power to become the children of God, even to them that believe in his name, which were born not of blood, not of one's parents, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. The answers to questions chapter 15, I mean, I mean, the answers to questions number 15, 16, and 17, neither church confirmation, penances, or extreme unction are the basis for going to heaven. God has provided only one way of salvation. So therefore, church confirmation, you know, becoming a member of a church and denomination, you know, doesn't automatically make you saved. So what is God's only way of salvation? The Bible gives a definite answer. The only way to heaven is if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead as said in Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Because we cannot save ourselves by good works, good character, personal effort, or merit of any kind. God sent his son to die as a substitute for sinners like you and I. When the Lord Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day, he finished the work necessary for salvation. Now all God requires of you is to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Acts chapter 16 verse 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. So when you trust in Jesus, you are saved and, and are destined to spend eternity in heaven. Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 24, He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death unto life. So will you, will you accept God's way of salvation? The choice is yours. You may continue to trust in those things listed in all uh, the questions, you know, questions 1 through 17. And so you will go to the grave without Christ and wake up facing God's eternal punishment or you can believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. So be wise and choose Christ. For Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to heaven except through Jesus Christ. And about being a good person, being or being a really good person, being a really nice person and maybe sweet to everyone and everything, the Bible says that no one in this world has done good. No, not one. I'm not saying that anyone who, any people happen to be really good people, really nice people are bad, but everyone has, everyone in this world has sin in their life. Everyone. We all sin every day. Christians are only sinners saved by grace. And there's uh, something else here that I want to read. It says that getting saved, being born again, is an act of faith each person has to choose to do for themselves. I can't do it for them and no one can do it for them only you I mean you can't do it for them their pastor can't do it for them accepting Jesus into your heart and life as an act of faith each person has to decide to do for themselves it is a choice they and they alone have to make so it's up to you and uh, the choice on that the Bible says that we're not we're not promised tomorrow we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not even guaranteed another hour. We're not even guaranteed another minute in this life. Now, 
Each day, waking up to see the next day is a gift from God. But God promises tomorrow to none of us. And the Bible also says, For why put off salvation for tomorrow? For today is the day of salvation. Anyone out there who wants to, uh, you think you think you might live to see tomorrow, and you think, well, I, well, I just want to live a little. So are you saying that there's no life in being a Christian? You actually get a whole lot more, way more out of the Christian life than you do in the life of, of not being a Christian. Continuing reading here from uh, Pastor Bill Keller of LifePrayer.com and uh, yeah, Bill Keller Ministries. If uh, Bill Keller is uh, viewing this video, I'm just I'm reading uh, something you wrote in a in a daily devotional because a lot of people viewing this video probably don't uh, they they probably don't uh, receive your daily devotional every day. But here's something taken from a, a daily devotional that you wrote. What we can do and are commanded to do is, is tell people how they can be saved. We are called to share, share with those in our lives the hope we have in Christ. After you share the gospel with a person, at that point, all you can do is pray for them to open their heart to trust Christ's love and to make to the decision to invite Him into their life by faith. There is nothing wrong with having that conversation with them over and over, since you never know when they might be at a place in their life when they are finally ready to listen. Again, the key to pray, the key is prayer, since they have to be willing to open their heart to hear about Christ's love for them. At which point, it is the Holy Spirit who brings them under conviction into that place of surrender. We are simply God's human instrument. One leak and a long chain of people along the way God uses to bring a person to give their lives to Jesus. And that's what God is doing here is, is using me to, uh, uh, to produce this video. Bill Keller says, of everything I've discussed with you each day, the most important subject there is, is salvation. I want to use this time today to clarify for many out there who will be in heaven. It drives me crazy to hear gutless pastors, especially in the media, say that we don't know who will be in heaven. That is not true since God told us clearly in his word who would and who would not be in heaven. The salvation equation is very simple. It is, by God's grace, our faith plus nothing. There is only one way to heaven, and that is a personal faith in Jesus Christ by faith there is only one road to heaven that means that the type of church you belong to will not get you into heaven no amount of good works will get you into heaven you can't buy your way into heaven you can, being a good person will not get you into heaven I added that in there myself the only way to heaven is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ that is God's plan as he clearly lays out in the Bible the church is a place where people should be able to find a personal relationship with Christ, a place of fellowship, a place to be fed spiritually, a place where people can use their talents to serve God. Membership in the church will not get you into heaven when you die. There are many people who go through life doing wonderful things, helping people and living good lives. There is no amount of good works you can do in this lifetime to eliminate the sin we were all born with and the ones we commit each day and the sins that we commit each day being a good person will not get you into heaven when you die since the Bible clearly tells us that there is none that are good no not one there is only one way to heaven and that is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ by faith my friend, the message I want you to understand today is that God has made a simple way for his fallen children to be reconciled back into an everlasting relationship. Many have tried to complicate the issue of salvation. It is actually very simple. Recognize that you are a sinner. Repent and turn away from your sins and ask God to forgive you. Accept by faith Jesus Christ into your heart and sur surrender your life to him. Why Jesus? Because in God's plan, it was his sacrifice that paid for our sins. 
That is why there is no amount of good works, no amount of money, nothing you can do on your own because he already paid that price. Some feel that baptism is part of, part of the salvation experience. But baptism is simply an outward sign of the inward work of salvation. It is an act of identifying your, your life with Christ after you are saved. In essence, baptism would be a work. And today's scripture clearly tells us that salvation is by grace, through faith, and not of works, nor being a good person. So I'm asking about those who accept Christ on their deathbed and how unfair it is for them to go to heaven after a life of sin and rebellion. First of all, in perspective, this life is but a vapor, as the Bible calls it in comparison with eternity. You have to remember that those who rebel during their life and come to Christ at the end miss the joy, peace, and blessings of this life and must have surrendered greatly on the inside, living apart from God during those years on earth. The important fact is, like you and I, they are sinners who are saved by grace, saved by God's grace. And, um, God is a very merciful God. I'm uh, saying this as uh, not part of uh, uh, Bill Keller's daily devotionals, that uh, God is very merciful. He does give second chances, and if you are uh, if anyone who, who doesn't accept Christ as their Savior until they're on their deathbed, well, they are considered lucky. God will um, God will forgive their sins and for, and uh, remember no more. And they can still be saved, even if you've only been saved for two minutes or two seconds. You still be saved because uh, God. The Bible says that God desires for all to be saved. He's not going to be like, oh, you only accepted my Son as your Lord and Savior. You were only saved for two minutes. Forget you. Depart from me. No, God isn't like that. He's not like that at all. He's very merciful. And desires for each one of them to be saved. But I wouldn't wait until the last minute. I wouldn't wait for years. Because if anyone in this life decided that they would wait for years or decades till they uh, accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and have actually waited and, um, and then accepted Jesus Christ at the last minute right before they died, that's, that's right there, that's playing salvation roulette. And they were only considered lucky to, to have lived all those years because the Bible says that pr tomorrow is promised to none of us. Why put off the things of tomorrow? For today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation, yo. Many ask if you can lose your salvation. Well, as Bill Keller says, I'm not going to get into the age-old theological debate of once saved, always saved. Part of the salvation equation is God's grace. To lose your salvation means that God would withdraw His grace. I've never been able to find any place in the Bible that says God will withdraw His grace. And of course the question becomes, at one point would He? God never does that and He never will. He never has. The Bible teaches that if you make a sincere commitment to Christ by faith, you are saved. Only God knows for certain if a person has done this or not. If you rebel, you lose the blessings and peace and the joy. The prodigal son never stopped being his father's son but lost out on the blessings of living in submission to his father and endured much pain and heartache for rebellion for rebelling the little ill. <laughs> the bottom line is if you follow Christ you will never ever have to worry about losing your salvation and that concludes that part of uh, that, de that devotional written by Bill Keller well there you have it Your only hope for heaven is based completely on upon the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let me say this prayer for for anyone who who choose to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior right now. Uh, I'm gonna try to say this prayer of salvation off the top of my head, but um, I do my best, and when um. When you say this prayer, you got to meet it from the heart. And just know that uh, anyone else who uh, watching this video who knows me, just know that I'm, I'm not perfect, but I'm called to do the works of God. You know, I try my best to be Christ-like daily. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you were sent by God the Father 
to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that you that you died and were resurrected on the third day. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please save me from sin, save me from this world, and save me from myself. For again, I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I choose to live to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. If you if you said that prayer or added any other emphasis having to do with ex accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're saved. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Remember, you got to say that uh, from your heart. you got to mean it from the heart. And then, go from there and... and um, Start reading from the Bible. Find a church. If there's not already a church that you're a part of, um, I personally, I go to an Assembly of God church. See if you can find an Assembly of God church where you go to. But I'm not saying they're the best type of church in the world. I mean, there's uh, all kinds of spiritual churches out there. Just pray and God, ask for God's guidance to guide you to the right church that He would like to plant you in. And, and I talk to a pastor or talk to any elders of that church and tell them that you got saved and and that you'd like to, uh, uh, you'd like to know what else to do from this, from this day on. And for anyone who has, who didn't accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, just to let you know, we're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised another hour. Not even pro guaranteed another minute. And if you live well, it's, it's count that as a blessing from God. And count that as the only blessing. But Christians. Are, are told to count all of their blessings and think about how many blessings you can have and all the joy you can have of living a life in Christ. Well, there you have it. And uh, and pray daily for for the people you know who are uh, who are not saved. That that right there is for people who who accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. Anyone who's uh, who's viewing this video, who wants to make fun of me, who uh, wants to mock me, or you know, they want to make fun of me because I got a speech problem and I talk things off the top of my head or whatnot, just know that that, I, that I'm not perfect, that I'm only human. I know uh, certain problems I have, but it doesn't mean that God can't use anyone. God uses anyone. He can use anyone at any time. Well, there you have it. More videos to come with other things. And God bless you.